Retirement Cafe podcast, episode 86. Studying with the Open University with Dr. Liz Mark. Retired or thinking about retirement? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Retirement Cafe podcast. In each episode, we bring you an important conversation with insight, tips and knowledge, all designed to help you live a fulfilling and successful life in retirement. Here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner and Accredited Later Life Advisor, Justin King. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Retirement Cafe podcast, which is sponsored by the Timeline app. Timeline app is retirement income planning software that helps financial planners like me bring your retirement journey to life and answer your big retirement income questions. Next week, I will introduce you to our new sponsors, my financial planner, the Refixed Fee Retirement Planning Specialist. But for now, let's get back to this week's episode. We know, I know, that for many people, learning a new skill or studying something that's always been of interest is really important part of what makes for a successful retirement. So I'm delighted to have had the opportunity to interview the Pro Vice Chairman of the Open University, Dr. Liz Mark. Liz was herself a mature student and has over 30 years experience in UK higher education in teaching, student support and partnership work. She joins me to explain how the Open University's mission continues to lead the organisation to this day, what kind of courses the OU offer for various age groups, and how to get involved. Apologies for the uh, occasional poor quality of the audio in this episode at times, but I hope you still enjoy my conversation with Liz. So, really excited this morning to be joined by Dr Liz Ma. Uh, welcome, welcome, Dr. Liz Ma. <laughs> thank you very much, Justin, and thank you for inviting me. It's really nice to be here. So, uh, Liz, I uh, understand and I know that you've got a pretty grand title at the Open University. You're the Pro Vice Chancellor, which sounds very, very important. Can you tell me a little <laughs> bit about um, what you do and um, you know, yeah. how you've arrived there? Okay, so there are we, we, there are actually. Not all universities are the same, but we have two pro vice chancellors. There's a vice chancellor, that's the big boss. Uh, And then there's two pro vice chancellors, a deputy vice chancellor. So that's my boss. Um, And my particular responsibility is everything related to the student experience. So my title is pro vice chancellor students. And my concerns are everything that impacts on the student's academic journey, uh, on their support needs, um, on their experience, their satisfaction, their success. So it's quite a big portfolio, as you can imagine, mm. um, especially as we've got around 170,000 students. So um, that's a lot wow. of people to have some responsibility for. Um, but it's a bit I deal with things like making sure that that voice is heard. Um, I deal with things like when if there are particular problems that students are, that a large number of students are experiencing in the way they're accessing courses, I can then go in and look at that and say, right, what are we going to do about it? We need to do this, that or the other. If there's things that are making students unhappy um, that we're doing, how do we put those right? Um, so, so it's an entirely student focused role uh, and one which I really enjoyed because um I was a mature student myself. Most of our students are mature students. Uh, And I was a mature student with a small child when I started out um, studying for my degree. So I know how challenging it is uh, to be able to manage your life and to be able to study alongside it, Mm. uh, alongside that. So that's why the role for me is is really precious, really, it's really important. I mean, not everyone will be aware of who, I mean, we have some international listeners. Um, what is the Open University? Um, what's the history and the background and, and, you know, how did you get involved? Okay, so, well, the Open University is now, this year is 51. Uh, we had our 50th um, birthday celebrations all last year. Um, it was begun, it began in the... Um, kind of it's a, it was the idea of um, Harold Wilson, actually, um, in uh, the late 1960s, launched as what they called at the time the University of the Air. 
uh, because some um, listeners in, in, in the UK may remember uh, the days when you'd come in after a, uh, after a night at the pub and you go for a curry and then you come in and you'd be watching uh, open university programs on, on BBC television at, at one o'clock in the morning yeah. um, at physics and, you know, chemistry and music. And so a lot of people in the UK, particularly my age, will, will remember that. Mm. Um, and, and that was really how the OU started. It was, it, it has a very specific mission, um, which is to be open to people, to places, to methods, and to ideas. And we've maintained that focus uh, on our mission ever since uh, those very, very early days. Um, obviously, doing things in different ways now, so we don't rely so much on television. Um, we do much more online study. Um, the uh, the methods we use are, are different. Um, uh, we reach out to far more people um, because we can attract international students as well as UK-based students. So, um, yeah, so we, we are open. Um, and we're, I guess, the, um, the kind of the I want to say father, but it's really mother of, of all the other open universities around the world, because there are quite a lot of them, believe it or not. Um, I wasn't aware of that and mm -hmm. until I began working for the OU. Even though I knew about it, I didn't realize there were open universities in the rest of the world as well. So, And, and I think the openness comes from being able to access study very flexibly, um, but actually we don't have any entry requirements. So if you want to come and study with us, you don't need to have A-levels or anything like that. Uh, you just need to um, have the appropriate levels of literacy or numeracy, um, the desire to succeed, and the desire to engage with the ways in which we can help learners uh, to develop the skills that they need to study. So, that, so, so that's the Open University. Um, we have around 170,000 students, as I've said. Um, over 20,000 of those have some kind of disability. Wow. Um, so that's almost the size of a, a small university on its own. Yeah. Um, we know that there are around 5% of our students who are carers, caring for loved ones, um, family members who are disabled or elderly or have some kind of serious illness. We, we suspect there are far more than that, and we want to try to make sure that people tell us that they have that carer status in order that we can provide the right sort of support for them Brilliant. in their learning. So, um, I mean, I know that um, some of the retirees that I talk to, you know, they're, they're, they're looking to um, for that next stage of their life. They're looking for, they're often are very curious about doing further learning. Um, and some of them, you know, may feel, well, I, I definitely know that I, some of the people I've talked to um, went straight into the world of work. You know, they didn't go for a university education um, and they've, they've done well, they've, they've had successful careers, but they're now looking at that opportunity to maybe study something that they never had the opportunity to do so and, and are looking for that, um, looking for that opportunity. Is, is that your experience as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I know very many people who've moved into retirement and, and have thought, now is my chance to learn something different, to learn something new. Actually, though, you don't have to necessarily sign up for a qualification. I mean, you can, you can carry on learning through life without actually trying to get a degree or a certificate or a diploma. Those things are there and I think it's I love it I think it's absolutely wonderful when people who've spent their life in the workplace and then have decided they want to do something for themselves and they'll walk across that platform with their degree at the age of 80 or our eldest graduate is 93 you know so Fantastic. and that is just so amazing just really amazing but I know my um my own my own mother um she didn't go to university um and when um uh, but she saw quite a few of the open university television programs and there was the one one that we had um on the bbc it was about the story of religion mm -hmm. and she said i'm really interested in that and i said well i'll get you the books and stuff and she said oh i don't want to do any exams and i said mom you don't have to do any exams you can buy the books you can just watch some of the stuff online and and, and, and watch the television the videos of the television programs and and she was really happy with that so wow, wow. There, there are so many opportunities Mm, I wasn't aware. Are, are you? Um, do you still put out content in essence for free on the television? 
Um, we do we do work closely with the BBC and other channels um, to to develop content. So Blue Planet is probably the one that you know uh, that most people have heard of. So and you, there are some really really fabulous television programs, and you get to the end of them, and then there's a the little OU logo there that says that we've been contributing to those programs um and we we also um contribute to programs on radio as well right. um so um there's a, you'll often hear in collaboration with the open university at the end of something on radio four for example yeah. but we also have um a huge amount a huge quantity rather of um free learning materials on our open learn platform Okay. So if you want to um, if you want to have a taste of um, uh, of some open university learning, but you don't necessarily want to do a whole course, there's all kinds of things that you can um, that you can have a look at um, on our, on our Open Learn site. And I would say to listeners, just just Google Open Learn or go to the Open University website and and look for the Open Learn platform, and and you can find all kinds of things there. So. One, one of the really popular ones we have at the moment is around starting with maths. And this is where um, actually parents and grandparents are looking at how they can help their children or grandchildren uh, to, to cope with their maths, particularly at this time when, yeah. when, when most children are still working, you know, studying at home. Brilliant. But there's all kinds of, there's loads of COVID related stuff there. Uh, there's there's all, all sorts of things you know there's I, I noticed one today which is about wildflowers and their history um, all kinds of interesting things there that you can uh, that you can have a look at and they range in size so they're just a few hours or they could be 10 hours or 20 hours so yeah all that free stuff is there for people brilliant brilliant so I've got so many questions um do you remember the ninety-three-year-old who who uh, who who got their degree? What what were they qualifying in? Um, to be honest, I can't remember, Justin. <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> I just know that. But we've had you know we've had people um, qualifying in all kinds of things. So um, in the arts, in English literature, you know, um, psychology. Um, but because we teach such a, a wide range of subjects, with you know, any, anything that you would expect in any other university. We do teach, and although we teach at a distance, there are some things that are a little more difficult to teach at a distance. Say, fine arts, for example, is we, we have arts courses, but we don't do the what you might call the painting and decorating um, <laughs> f- fine art type activity um, and performing arts. But we do have music um, qualifications, wow. um, and we collaborate with other um, other providers, um, other other higher education institutions. Um, to provide some of those uh, courses you can take um, science courses online so we've got virtual um, science laboratories so people can actually do experiments from home virtually using our virtual science labs we've got a virtual microscope so you can um, you know watch the stars or there's there's all kinds of um, all kinds of things that that people can do in those online environments now i mean um Part of university, of course, for university, kind of normal university life, I suppose, you know, is is about the uh, companionship and the people that you meet um, and, the, and the connections that you make. How do, do people really miss out on that because it's an online learning experience? Um, not really, no. Um, it's not the same as going to a face to face university. Um, but there are lots of opportunities to interact with other students. And um, I have to say that some of of our students come to us because they don't want that campus experience right. they, they, they want to do their learning and then get on with their lives kind of thing because m- most of them are in work or in, or have caring responsibilities young children and and they want to do their get their degree their qualification um and they and they're not particularly interested in that kind of um going to the student bar <laughs> kind of experience <laughs> um but we have um and particularly during um, the pandemic crisis we've been doing really interesting things like virtual coffee mornings where students can get together and talk about the, the court so our law school have been doing things like that um, and we always have social interaction through what we call forums where students can um, communicate with each other uh, and we have a students association which is a little bit like the students union where it's the same kind of thing but whereas we have a students association all our students are 
de facto members of that association unless they don't want to be. Um, uh, and they run all kinds of um, events either regionally. So I know of, um, of some students who will meet up at a, a garden centre in Sussex regularly. So, you know, to, to have a little in, in the cafe, not to buy the plants, I think, although I guess buying the plants is, is optional. Um, but we also have Facebook groups, um, all kinds of, of uh, social media groups that people can join in. Great. And, and we also have... Um, we also have something that um, is called Student Hub Live, where we live webcast um, events that students can participate in um, via um, social media. So there's lots of opportunities to interact with other students if you want to. Brilliant, brilliant. So, um, and uh, lots of opportunities to get involved in the running of the university. Okay, okay. Well, so if someone was interested um, and they wanted to dip their toe in the water, uh, could you give me an idea? I mean, I appreciate that you said there's lots of free free resources, but um, is there a typical cost to getting a degree through the Open University? There is, and I can uh, I can give you the figures. Um, so, uh, if you just want to dip a toe in in the water with the uh, with the Open Learn materials, just to see if the kind if that's the kind of learning that would would suit you. Mm. Um, but you can um, you can sign up for a certificate of higher education, which is the equivalent of one year in a full-time face-to-face institution, um, and then the um, and diploma, which is the equivalent of two years, or a degree, which is the equivalent of three years of study. They're split into credits, so each year is 120 credits, um, and so a module you study a module can be either 30 credits or 60 credits. You can do two 30 credits in a year. You can do one 60 credit. You can do two 60 credits in a year if you want to. You can just build up the number of credits to get to the qualification you want to. Right. So if we, look at the, if we look at the pricing for that, um, so this is in uh, England pricing. So our fee for a 60 credit module is 3096 so in um, for a certificate of higher education, you need to do two of those, and that would be 6,192. So a full honours degree um, would be £18,576. But um, many of our students will spread their um, study over five, six, seven years um, so that that total sum of money is spread um, across those years that there is um, obviously some students have grant uh, loan eligibility so they can get loans we have our own financing system so that if people want to pay in installments they can do right. um, and we also have a, um, a kind of toe dipping experience uh, for, for people who might not feel confident of their ability to study and those are our access modules so we have three of those um, and they are um, 30 credits. They're worth 30 credits. Um, and they're at what we call level zero. So it's just like kind of just before undergraduate level. Right. Um, and uh, the uh, those access modules are half the price of a 30 credit module. So probably around, um, I'm trying to think of the price off the top of my head, 3,000, 1,500, about 700, between 700 and 800 pounds. Right. And, um, and, and, and for people on low incomes, there is a fee waiver in place. Wow. Um, and those access modules are designed to help people to get a taste of the study, um, mm. to develop their study skills. Maybe if you've not been in education for a long time, coming back and having to write an essay yeah. is quite a daunting experience. So these modules are, are about um, helping people to develop those skills. And they are the three subjects are STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. So that's in it starting with STEM. Um, there's one called People, Work, and Society, which covers things like psychology, social sciences, childcare, literature, history, the humanities type, um, and, and, and some languages. And those give you the opportunity to just try a little bit of study um, as if you were a real student, well, you are a real student, you're registered as a student, um, and to see whether that's the direction you want to go in. So I'd always recommend if somebody's been out of study for a long time, start starting with that. But then if you've been in the workplace for many, many years, you know, if you've been working in 
I don't know, any, any workplace really, you, you develop so many skills um, in your working life mm. that actually you bring a different set of knowledge and experience and skills. I think that mature students bring so much with them from their life journeys that it really helps them to engage with their learning right. probably more more easily, more readily probably than some 18-year-olds who just go straight from school into university. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad experience. I'm just saying that, you, you know, as I was a mature student myself, I didn't go to, to start to study until I was 30. So um, I l- had a lot of life experience yes. that I could take into that. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, it's absolutely fascinating. And I feel um, very curious about all the things that um, the courses that you must you must offer. Um, so where can listeners find out more about what's available, what they could enroll in, what, you know, and the types of the types of courses that you've mentioned? So everything is on our website right. um, and that's www.open.ac.uk. Okay. And if you go onto our website, um, there's all, all the information that you need is there. You can browse the courses. Uh, you can look at how look at the, the the fee structures because it's different in each of the four nations of the UK. So if you're in Scotland, it'll be different to to England, for example, um, and the same in Wales. So um, you'll see the different information depending on where you are. And of course, if you're overseas, um, uh, then there'll be information available for your perspective. And um, as I say, you can browse the courses. You can have a little bit of you get more information about what a course is around. Um, if you are interested in studying, then you can call, um, well, under normal circumstances. So uh, at, at the moment, obviously, we're a little constrained in terms of telephony by the, uh, by the current crisis. But under normal circumstances, you can, you can speak to an advisor and get help and advice um, on, on where the right starting point is or what kind of thing you might want to study. And we've also got some free courses there which are just around developing your ability to study online. So we call them badged open courses. They're available on Open Learn. You get what's called a little digital badge when you complete it. Okay. So that so you can put that on your CV or whatever. It's, right. it's a bit like when you were in the Brownies or the Scouts and you got a badge and you could sew it onto your onto your uniform. So <laughs> these are digital badges. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. So, but, um, and I, that's been absolutely yeah. fascinating. And I will put all those links that you've mentioned uh, in the show notes so people can find those uh, on our website. Um, thank you so much for spending time with me this morning. It's really brilliant. And I, I do commend um, this, you know, Open University as a resource to people, especially maybe even, you know, if you're sat at home and, and currently maybe not working or wondering what your future looks like, um, maybe this is a, a way forward for you to reskill or to, to provide further knowledge or even, you know, to just be curious about the entertainment factor of um, of learning something new. Um, so uh, I think it's um, I think it's a great resource, and I love the way that it's uh, that it's so available to to everybody. Yeah, it is, and I and I, I have to say I am so proud to be working for the OU that whenever I work, write that down, I always put OU in capital letters and proud. So you know that because it's just such a you know, people have talked about it as a national treasure. I think it's more than that. You know, it's it's so special and we're so lucky in the UK to have something like this. Yeah. But that's my belief. Yeah. So I, I was a, an OU student myself many, many years ago. Um, and so when I eventually came to work for the OU, uh, that was a the pinnacle of my career, really. So Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed talking to you. And um, uh, well, I look forward to um, meeting you again one day. Well, I hope so. I'm very happy to come back, Justin, any time. Thanks, Liz. Thanks once again to Liz for taking the time to talk to us about the Open University. To find out more about the OU, check out the show notes on our website at theretirementcafe.co.uk where you'll find some useful links. As ever, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do leave us a review on iTunes and be sure to subscribe either on our website or your preferred podcast player so that you never miss an episode. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Anne Bewley for taking the time to write a review. 
She wrote that the podcast is a must listen and that Justin is a great host, that's very kind, who is deeply invested in his guests. He showcases different aspects of retirement and his guests are great at sharing their expertise. Highly recommended this podcast to anyone who wants to make the best out of retirement and more. Thank you for your kind words, Al. And a final thank you to Timeline App for your sponsorship over recent months. So until next time, this is Justin King helping you feel more informed in your retirement. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Cafe podcast with Justin King. To find out more, you can find us online at theretirementcafe.co.uk. 